A strong 6.5 magnitude earthquake has struck off the coast of Taranaki in the North Island of New Zealand, 65 kilometres southwest of Opanaki. At this stage, there are no reports of damage or injuries and no tsunami warning has been issued. The earthquake was felt across North and South Islands, as far as the Bay of Plenty and parts of Canterbury. Sky News New Zealand reporter Todd Simmons has more. There are no reports of major damage uh, at this stage. We still haven't had any reports of major damage. There are some reports of people with uh, photo frames and things falling off the walls, but it seems like this earthquake really was more of a scare for people. Uh, obviously a big fright for people uh, in the region in particular and down in Wellington as well. Uh, I'm told by Genius Science that it's actually the biggest earthquake in this particular region for about 120 years. But of course it was very deep. So 60 uh, kilometres southwest of Opunaki. Now that's out offshore, it's uh, in the, uh, well, under the ocean there. Now at a depth of 230 kilometres, as you mentioned, felt very widely from around the Bay of Plenty, which is uh, on the eastern side of the North Island, right down to Canterbury, which of course had uh, has had its fair share of shakes over the last year. Now the reason it was felt so wide, this is what I've been advised by DNS Science, is because it was so very deep. It's actually down on the, uh, where, the, where the Pacific plate meets the Australian plate, that's where this uh, quake was centred. It was on the fault line there, and uh, because it was so deep, it was uh, the ripple effects were basically felt along that fault line in different places. Uh, now, uh, there has been some, uh, a couple of other shakes around New Zealand, some other seismic activity in Christchurch, a, a small shake, a 3.9 just after 11, and in Tomatanui, a 3.3 as well. But I'm told by Genia Science that those two quakes are completely unrelated to the south of Okunaki. They say that there may be some aftershock, but it's unlikely that people will feel them because this quake has been centred offshore and because of the very depth of it. There also has been some misinformation out there tonight about volcanic alert levels. There are some tweets going out of people concerned at the volcanic alert level of Mount Ruapehu in the middle of the North Island and White Island, just off the coast uh, of, uh, well, uh, the Bay of Plenty, were raised to level one. But in fact, that's not quite right. I'm advised by Genius Science that there's always a small amount of volcanic activity at those two regions, and they're always on that alert level one. So there are are no concern about volcanic activity that people need to worry about at this stage. Like I said earlier, there are no reports of major damage from this earthquake. It really just seems to have been a scare for people. And we're joined on the line now by Richard Booth, who is a, a geologist who lives in Wanganui, just 80 kilometres from the epicentre. Richard, what were you doing when the quake struck? Uh, good evening, Vanessa. We were just uh, sat in front of the fire just about to uh, to start a cup of coffee, and uh, then, it, then it all started. It, what did it feel like? Um, it, was, it was very sort of gradual to begin with, sort of like a, a gentle shaking, and then it just seemed to build and, and build and build, and you kind of sit there and think, oh, should I move? Should I duck under a table now? Should I go and get the kids? Um, what kind of took us by surprise was uh, just, just how long it seemed to go on for. Um, we, we've been in New Zealand for four or five years and uh, never experienced anything quite as, uh, quite as dramatic as this. How long do you think it went for? Um, it felt like sort of ooh, 25, 30 seconds and once it had finished you could feel the house was still kind of swaying a little bit um, after, the, uh, after it had passed. Uh, what did you do at that point, Richard? Did you stay put or, or did you try and... Um, well, we were joined very quickly by the kids from upstairs who <laughs> very rapidly made their way downstairs. Um, for them, it's uh, their first experience of an earthquake here as well. And how are they going? Are they a bit sh shaken up? Have you got them back to bed? Or? Yeah, they, they, uh, three of them seem pretty excited about it, but uh, my son, who, who, who resides on the top floor, was, was a bit upset about it. Uh, even being quite high up, he kind of felt it a bit more than the rest of us. Is this the first earthquake you've experienced? A uh, major one, yeah. I mean, we've had a few minor shocks here and there. It's a bit of a wake-up call, really. You know, we've had a few sort of uh, very minor shocks here in Wanganui, uh, but, but nothing like this before. Yeah. I guess New Zealanders it can be forgiven for being a little more nervous when earthquakes strike. Are people sick of it, do you think, or, or are they more accepting that it's part of the natural order of things? 
I think, I mean, up here, uh, certainly where we, we live, um, it's not a very common occurrence. I mean, yeah, there are a few minor ones, uh, but obviously things are very different uh, down, down in Canterbury where it's pretty much a, a daily occurrence and part of, part of, part of everyday life. But here it was, it was a bit out of the blue, really. All right, well, pleased to hear everyone's uh, safe and well. Richard Booth uh, at uh, Wanganui, you uh, hope you get back to bed soon. <laughs> Much of New Zealand was shaken by a powerful earthquake last night. The magnitude 7 quake was felt up and down both islands. One news reporter, James Ransley, joins us now live from our Wellington newsroom. James. Good afternoon. Well, uh, no reports of any major damage or injury, but like you said, Peter, this was felt all over New Zealand. Uh, we've had, well, it was felt as far north as Auckland and as far south as Gore, and everywhere in between we've had reports of people feeling this jolt in uh, Hawke's Bay, Fielding, uh, even National Park. It struck just after 10.30 last night, and it was centred just off the coast of Taranaki at a depth of 230 kilometres. Uh, another smaller shock soon followed about 10 minutes later, but the last time a seven-magnitude quake was uh, struck this area in particular was more than a hundred years ago. So people are left wondering uh, why they, uh, up and down the country, how they, why they felt an earthquake like this, why it was felt so widely across the country. Uh, so we asked GNS a short time ago who explained the very reasoning behind that. Here's what they had to say. Part of it is, is the magnitude of the earthquake itself and part of it is due to the physics that uh, you see around a subduction zone. Um, the energy travels very efficiently up back up the plate towards the surface and that means that the distribution of, uh, of, of the energy is very even and you feel it very widely across the country. So Civil Defence is now urging people to sign up to the New Zealand shakeout drill. This will be the country's uh, biggest ever earthquake drill and that will take place uh, later in September. Thank you, that's James Ransley there live from... Well. As many of you would have felt overnight, a powerful magnitude 7 earthquake has struck the North Island. It was felt as far north as Hamilton and right down to Christchurch. Joining me with more is GNS seismologist Lara Bland. Good morning, Lara. Hi. Now look, we've had anecdotal evidence of where this earthquake was felt, but from your information, can you tell us how far from the epicentre it was felt? Uh, well, as, as you um, reported, you're, you're quite accurate with um, what we've had submitted to us as well. We've had fault reports come in from as far away as Auckland and also down to, to Gore in Southland. So, is, yeah, it un is it unusual for a quake like that to be felt so widespread throughout the country? Um, well, that's, that's a good question. Um, it's, it is to do with a quake of this nature, and that's the reason that it has been felt so widely. It's... Um, it was obviously very large, um, I mean, she'd seven, and also uh, very deep. And but just the properties of how the energy travels for earthquakes like that means that it does get felt uh, in a very, very widespread area. What kind of a quake was it? We've had feedback coming in saying the rolling woke me up. The house was like it was on a skateboard sliding back and forth. Is there anything specific about the movement of the ground for this quake? Um, a lot of those descriptions will always be... Uh, subjective depending on a, on a, a lot of factors um, as much as um, what kind of building you're in and, and what kind of uh, rock type you, you is in your area that you're, that you're sitting on. Um, but we do hear a lot for, for deep and distant earthquakes you do get um, often you experience a, more of a rolling sensation and that's again because of the kind of energy that does make it to those distances from the epicenter. Okay, and I understand quakes of this magnitude are felt once, approximately every three years. Is there any rhyme or reason for that frequency, or is it a random coincidence? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just statistics. So if, if, if you look back in the, in the records of the last few years, that's kind of the um, frequency that we see magnitude sevens on around the country. Okay, Lara Bland, GNS seismologist, thanks for that update.